My beloved brothers and sisters, across the globe, we are witnessing so much of hardship and difficulty. Across the globe, we are witnessing sickness, disease, loss, calamity, and so much of negativity. Some people are drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of all of this. For them, good news. Some people are drifting away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People say, I am calling out to Allah. I am making dua to Allah. I am asking Allah, why is Allah not answering me? Someone told me I've been making a dua for two years and Allah did not answer my dua. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explains to us, يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَسْتَعْجِلُ Every one of you will be responded to and is responded to for as long as you don't make haste. So the companions asked him, what is it? What is meant by making haste? He says, an, an yaqula, for a person to say, da'awtu falam yustajabli. I made dua and I made dua, but I didn't get a response. Do you not trust Allah? Do you not know that Allah knows what is best for you? Sometimes you're asking for something that Allah knows is not good for you. He won't give it to you. And sometimes you're not asking for something that Allah knows is better for you, so He gives you. How many of us have so many things? In fact, every one of us have so many things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we did not ask Him for. He blessed us with it. He blessed us with so many gifts. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So always thank Allah. But today I'd like to speak about something very important. We know that Allah is the most merciful. We know that he is the most kind. Al-Ghafoor, Al-Ghaffar. Ghaffar means one who constantly forgives. Not one time, many times. Every time you do wrong, he forgives you. That is Al-Ghaffar. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Wadud, the most loving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Rahim, the most merciful. Al-Rahman, also the most merciful. A different type of mercy. So I want to ask you a question. Do you really think that the day you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will not look at the days when you sought forgiveness and the days when you praised Him and the days when you believed in Him completely and fully, the days when you worshipped Him? Do you really think that Allah is going to ignore all of this when He is the most forgiving, the most merciful, the most kind, the most compassionate, etc., etc.? The answer is obviously not. Allah is going to look at us, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the eye of mercy. Remember that. Don't ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Shaytan's plot is to make you lose your link with Allah by making you lose hope in the mercy of Allah. And this is why in Surah Al-Zumar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in a verse known as the verse with the greatest hope in it. The verse with the greatest hope in it. Arja ayah fil Quran al kareem It has the greatest hope in the entire Quran. It's this verse. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O oh my worshippers, who have transgressed against themselves, what is meant by transgressing against themselves? When you commit a sin, are you harming Allah? No. Who are you harming? Your own self. That's who you are harming. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above all. He is independent of all. Ya ayyuhannasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. O people, you are fully dependent upon Allah. And Allah is absolutely independent of all of you. He is deserving of praise and He is the owner of all praise. Subhanallah. Deserving of praise meaning whether you praise Him or not, He is still the owner of praise. You know something amazing with Allah. When you praise Allah, when I praise Allah, I'm actually helping myself. That's amazing with Allah. When I say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, I'm praising Allah, all praise is due to Allah, glory be to Allah, Allah is the greatest, etc., etc. All that is myself benefiting, not Allah. Allah doesn't benefit from your ibadah, nor is He harmed by your ma'asiyah or your sin. He doesn't benefit through your acts of worship and He's not harmed by your sin. It is rather the benefit for us and the harm against us. So Allah says, O oh my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves. The first thing he says, 
لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Don't ever In our language we would say Don't you dare lose hope in the mercy of Allah So that means if you lose hope in the mercy of Allah You are going against the command of Allah If you lose hope in the mercy of Allah You are committing a major sin against Allah Allah is telling you don't lose hope You say no I'm losing hope Astaghfirullah Astaghfirullah Allah is telling you don't lose hope And you're saying no I have done too much I am far away I am not you know, within the mercy of Allah, that is shaitan trapping you. Shaitan traps. How does he trap? By making you think that Allah won't have mercy on you. Look at Adam alayhi salam. Something very interesting that Allah allowed to happen through his divine decree. Allah told Adam and Hawa alayhi salam, you can be in Jannah and do what you want, right? Except one thing, right or wrong? Except one thing. Allah says, do what you want. Only one thing, don't do. You and I, we have maybe hundreds of things we are not allowed to do, right? Hundreds of things. There's so much of haram that we are not allowed to do. And we will stay away for the sake of Allah. Adam alayhi salam, there was only one thing. Allah says, وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ And don't go close to this tree. Don't eat from this fruit. That's all. There's nothing else. Everything else, you can do what you want, you know? Allah says, فَكُلَا مِنْ حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا Eat whatever you want. Do what you like here. This is Jannah. One thing we want is don't eat from this fruit. Guess what? The exact thing that Adam alayhi salam was told not to do, he did it. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. The exact thing he was told, don't do this thing only, that is the same thing he did. Because it was shaitan who actually made him that way. Made him think. How did shaitan con him? Shaitan tells him, do you know what? We... No, why? Allah told you not to eat from the tree. If you eat from there, you become rich. You're going to have a lot of wealth that will never deplete. And if you eat from there, you won't die. No death will come against you. Subhanallah. No death will come against you. Should I show you that tree that you, if you eat from, you will not die. You will last forever. And you will have dominion and kingdom that will never deplete. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. And then when he tricked Adam alayhi salam, as soon as Adam alayhi salam committed the sin, he realized, oh oh, he felt a shame. His shame was exposed. And he said, Rabbana ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh our Rabb, we have wronged ourselves. Look at how that verse of mercy, it says, those who have transgressed against themselves. Here he is saying, anfusana. We wronged ourselves. It goes to show you when you commit a sin, Allah is not harmed. You are harmed. So Adam alayhi salam is saying, Oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves. Anfusana. And you know what? Illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna. If you don't forgive us and have mercy on us, we will be from the losers. Allah says, No problem, Adam. We have forgiven you. Subhanallah. We have forgiven you. Why? Because we heard these words from you. You sought forgiveness, you are forgiven. Adam alayhi salam was chosen by Allah to be the first of the species. In a certain way, Allah created him. He was not born, he was created. Difference. So Allah forgave him. And Allah is telling all of us, no matter what you do, even if Allah told you, do not do this, don't do it. Learn from the example of your forefather, Adam. You know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? يَا بَنِي آدَمَ لَا يَفْتِنَنَّكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ كَمَا أَخْرَجَ أَبَوَيْكُمْ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ Allahu Akbar. Oh children of Adam, that's you and I. We're all the children of Adam. We're all brothers and sisters. We're all connected to each other somehow. We are related somehow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh children of Adam, don't let shaitan trap you and test you the same way he did to your father Adam and he made them come out of Jannah. He was jealous, so he harmed them, he trapped them. And when they got trapped, they did something Allah told them not to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we forgave them because they sought forgiveness. So Allah is telling us, you seek forgiveness, I will forgive you. That's what Allah is saying. Ask for forgiveness, I'll forgive you. You did the sin once, forgive. Seek forgiveness, Allah will forgive. You committed it again, seek forgiveness, Allah will forgive. You committed it a third time, seek forgiveness, Allah will forgive. You committed it a fourth time, seek forgiveness, Allah will forgive. And so on. Each time you seek forgiveness, you must promise Allah, I'm not going to do this again. 
But if shaitan comes to you after that and you fell again, seek forgiveness. The idea is never to lose hope in the mercy of Allah. No matter where shaitan took you, come back. No matter where he took you, he took you to the pubs and the clubs and the casinos and the adultery and whatever else and the anything, the gambling and the drugs and whatever it may have been. Come back, please, my brothers and sisters, no matter how many times you did what you did, come back. That's what Allah is telling you. Don't lose hope. Allah says, I made you. You have no option but to come back to me. One day you're going to come back to me. You have to. There's no chance that you're not. The day you are going to return to Allah, think of good things. You know, my brothers and sisters, if you are present when someone is in their sickness of death, sakrat, what should you tell them? We are taught that you should remind them of the good they did, not the bad. The bad is wiped out. Consider it wiped. Tell them, Allah loves you. You are going to return to Allah. Allah has prepared a Jannah for you. Allah has pre prepared forgiveness for you. Allah will grant you the goodness. We are going to meet with Allah, the most merciful, the most kind, the most forgiving, the most compassionate. I actually believe myself that the day I'm going to return to Allah, I will be so amazed because if I'm impressed by creation here and a few of the things I see around me, subhanallah, imagine how impressed I'm going to be by Al-Khalaq, the creator of entire creation. People are still trying to arrive on the moon and Mars and wherever else, and they're talking about it, right? And they want to go more and more and more. Allah knows what will happen. Allah says, Ya ma'ashar al-jinni wal-insi in istata'atum an tanfudhu min aqataari samawati wal-ard fanfudhu la tanfudhuna illa bisultan fa bi ayyi alai rabbikuma tukadhiban Surah Al-Rahman. Allah says, Oh mankind, oh jinn kind, if you would like to dive in the earth so go up into the skies whatever you want to try to do you may go ahead you will not be able to get to any place that Allah has not permitted you to get to if you see the moon you don't know how many moons there are there's only one that's visible to you and I maybe there might be so many galaxies Allah created that you and I don't know science is discovering new planets by the minute by the minute bigger and huger and massive and they're telling you there are billions of these huge planets that we've never ever dreamt existed but because of a little bit Allah is showing you his greatness Allah says we will show them the signs in the horizons we will show them as time passes more and more and more signs and in themselves, within themselves, look at the DNA. Look at the vaccines they are developing that can instruct the cell what to do and what not to do. It's very interesting. If you look at it, it is revolutionary technology. It is something mind-boggling how it works. They have gotten into the DNA all by the permission of Allah. And Allah says, you know what? وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا You have all this knowledge, right? It is very little. Very, it's just a drop. You still don't know anything. Subhanallah. You still don't know anything. How long is the earth in existence for? Millions of years, maybe billions, right? Millions of years. In these millions of years, all the people who existed, how far did they go? Do you know that today we are technologically the most advanced? And in the last few decades, it's become absurd. If I told you when I was young that a day will come when you can hold a phone without a wire, I would think you are crazy. And then if I were to tell you, you can look at your phone and see the person you're talking to in New Zealand, you would probably think, mm, this man, a jinn, he has a jinn, subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. But my beloved brothers and sisters, the power of Allah is absolute mutlaq. It is complete. He, he has every power you can ever dream of. He is the all powerful. That's what it is. So going back, when Allah has created all of this, when a person is in sakrat, what are you going to think of? Think of good things. Yes, you may have committed sin. Concentrate on the tawbah, not on the sin. Don't tell your sin you are too big in front of my Lord. Tell your sin, my Lord is bigger than you. Subhanallah. My Lord is bigger than you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the Quran. وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ What a powerful verse. My mercy has encompassed everything. Everything. The skies and the earth are standing because of the mercy of Allah. You and I are born because of the mercy of Allah. Let's worship Allah. You will make mistakes because you are human. You might do something wrong, you are human. Watch out, don't do things intentionally wrong because then you become evil. And only Allah knows what will be the condition of yours upon death. Only Allah knows. 
But Allah wants you to be the most powerful person in terms of strength to fight shaitan. Shaitan's whispers. He came to Adam. He will come to you and I more. If he trapped Adam alayhi salam when Adam spoke to Allah, how about trapping you and I? He will trap our hearts, make them dirty, unclean, make us have jealousy, hatred, ill feeling. Learn to love people. These are your brothers and sisters. Who are you? Who am I? I am your brother, whether you like it or not. I, no matter where you come from, I'm related to you. How? Maybe 15 generations, maybe 20 generations. We have one person who was our father. But sometimes we don't realize that. So we start all this animosity. Let's be careful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter, don't lose hope in my mercy. No matter where shaitan took you. Remember, if you are to believe shaitan that Allah is merciless, you have disbelieved in Allah that he is merciful. Remember that. This is Allah. And that's why when we talk about the mercy of Allah, remember, material items is not necessarily a sign of the mercy of Allah. Say, Allah didn't give me. Allah didn't give you what? Maybe his mercy dictated not to give you. Because he knows you're going to be a better person. You will come for salah. You will actually be humble. Some people, the more they get, the more they divert. This is also very, very difficult. So my brothers and sisters, let us learn this. Now, I just want to quickly move through the next two verses of that particular portion of the Quran within Surah Al-Zumar, where Allah says, don't lose hope in my mercy. What does he say? He says, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Don't ever, don't you dare lose hope in the mercy of Allah. إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا Indeed, Allah will forgive all of your sins. In fact, the term used in Arabic, يغفر, it means Allah forgives and will forgive. It's called مضارع. مضارع means present and future tense. Allah will forgive and Allah forgives and will forgive your sins. All of them. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed, he is the one who is Al-Ghafoor, Al-Rahim. Surely we need to go and meet him. We need to prepare for the day we're going to meet him. Who is Al-Ghafoor? If I tell you, you know, I, I, I did something against this guy, for example, and people say, don't worry, he's very kind. You won't be worried. You'll just walk. He'll say, never mind. If I tell you Allah is the kindest of all, what do you think Allah is going to do to you? And I, I also think sometimes of the people of Quraysh who harmed the Prophet Sallam. And the Prophet Sallam says, Ya ma'ashara Quraysh, mada tadunnuna anni fa'ilu bikum. People of Quraysh, on the day of victory of Mecca, he had them all. He could have executed them. He says, oh people of Quraysh, what do you think I'm going to do to you? You have harmed, you have killed, you have done whatever you did to us. They said, well, we are hoping goodness. He says, idhabu fa'antum utbulaqa. He says, go, you guys are all free. No retribution today. I'm going to tell you what Yusuf alayhi salam, the Prophet Joseph told his brothers, may peace be upon them all. Go, today there is no retribution. I forgive all of you. If the Prophet ﷺ can forgive the kuffar of Quraysh, do you not think Allah will forgive you and I? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. We have been trying to worship Allah. Another one. If Allah forgave the magicians at the time of Moses, Musa alayhi salam, by one sajda that they did, you and I have done thousands of them. May Allah accept at least one from us. But Allah says, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِن قَبْلِ أَن يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابِ Turn to Allah quickly. Don't waste. Don't delay. Don't waste time. Don't delay. مِن قَبْلِ أَن يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابِ Before the punishment comes to you. I tell you what happens. Here is the punishment. It's coming to you. The punishment is coming to you, right? If you turn before the punishment comes, you will not be punished. But if you don't turn, the punishment will strike. The punishment strikes. Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah will not punish them while they are seeking forgiveness. First thing, a calamity strikes. You must say, Astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, forgive my shortcomings, those which I know, those which I don't know. Because you don't want to be punished by Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from His mercy. May Allah open our doors so that we understand the mercy of Allah. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, if we knew the mercy of Allah, we would never ever lose any hope in achieving Jannah. But on the other hand, if you know the punishment of Allah, and if you know the severity of the punishment of Allah, and if you know the, the hellfire that Allah has prepared, then it is said that when you know that anger of Allah as well, you would feel in your heart, ooh, I don't know if I'm going to be saved from this. But a true believer knows deep down that Allah will save me. If I ask you, and I will end on this note, what is the most powerful dhikr and what is the most powerful statement that you could ever say and utter? Did you know it is La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah? As simple as that, there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. You repeat that, Allah, Allah knows. He is our creator, our maker. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all.